Hey everyone, my name is Deep Patadia. I'm currently a pulmonary critical care fellow at Mount Sinai St. Luke's, Mount Sinai West, and Mount Sinai Beth Israel in New York City. And with our next talk, we're going to talk about loops. I don't know why people fear loops, they get a little bit of anxiety, but loops can give you a lot of information about what's going on. So let's delve into loops. Loops. All right. First thing you want to do is take note of the scale. You have volume here, pressure. This is a volume pressure loop. Next one here, we have flow here and volume here. This is a flow volume loop. Second thing you have to note is which phase is the patient in. So here, this is inspiration. This is expiration. Inspiration, expiration. Here, you have inspiration. This is expiration. Inspiration, expiration. So that's how I want you to look at all these. Now, I have a simple question for you. Which type of mode do we have for each of these patients? Don't get overwhelmed. Try to figure it out and we'll discuss it. I'm sure you'll get it. Pause the video now. All right, so how do we determine what type of mode we have for this patient? So let's break it down. I like to talk about patient B first because most people get patient B before they get patient A. How do we figure out what type of mode we have? The way we determine the mode is trying to figure out our target variable. So remember that the target variable should be constant during the inspiratory phase. So again, we have inspiration here, expiration here. Inspiration here, expiration here. Now during the inspiratory phase, the target variable should be constant. So look right here, the flow is completely constant during the inspiratory phase here. So therefore, you know that flow is your target variable. What mode of ventilation do we know that flow is the target variable? Volume control ventilation. Let's go to patient A here. We have inspiration, expiration. Inspiration, expiration. During the inspiratory phase, we should have a target variable that's constant. Over here, it is completely different. It doesn't look like an independent variable. But look right here. During the inspiratory phase, the pressure is constant. So patient A, we can say the target variable is pressure. What mode of ventilation do we know that pressure is the target variable? Pressure control ventilation. And there you have it. You have just figured out what mode of ventilation the patient has just by looking at their loops. Now, what does this slope designate? This is volume over pressure, also known as compliance. Now, looking at the volume pressure loop, you can roughly eyeball what the compliance is. This is normal compliance for a patient. Now, if the slope were down here, what do you think the compliance would be? Do you think it would be low or high? It would be low. Contrast that if the slope were up here, then the compliance would be really high. What would cause low lung compliance? Large pleural effusion, large pneumonia, atelectasis, pulmonary edema, pulmonary fibrosis, pneumothorax, ARDS. These would be causes of low lung compliance. Now let's talk about high lung compliance. Where would you see that? Emphysema, COPD, these are highly compliant lungs. Coming back to patient A, you cannot assess compliance in this patient. Why not? Because the pressure here is constant. Pressure here is the target variable. So throughout the inspiratory phase, it will be constant. Therefore, you cannot assess compliance. You can only assess compliance in volume control modes. You cannot assess compliance in pressure control modes for that reason. Now let's look at the flow volume loop. This is inspiration here, and this is expiration here. Now if you were to take this image and rotate it 180 degrees with exhalation on top and inspiration on bottom, it would actually be a poor man's PFT. So let's take a look. This is a ventilator. We have inspiration on the top, expiration on the bottom. Here's a quick flow volume loop for a ventilator. If we rotated this 180 degrees, you would get what we know 
a spirometry or a PFT. And we can see what a normal spirometry looks right here. Now, I'm not saying that flow volume loops on a ventilator is equivalent to that which you find on spirometry findings or a PFT. And the reason for that is because exhalation on a ventilator is passive, whereas on spirometry, it is very active. The patient is asked to force an exhalation. So again, they are not equivalent, but sometimes you can pick up some overlap between flow volume loops on spirometry and flow volume loops on a ventilator. So let's take a look at some common patterns on spirometry. So this is obstruction. So you can see there's delayed exhalation here, also scooping of the exhalation phase right here. Here's restriction. We can see some heightened flow and some low volumes. Here's variable extrathoracic obstruction. The way I like to think about uh, extrathoracic obstruction and intrathoracic obstruction is in extrathoracic obstruction, the inspiratory phase is affected. And on intrathoracic obstruction, the expiratory phase is affected. Now you will get blunting of the inspiratory phase in extrathoracic obstruction, but I wanna make sure that you're aware that you do not get it confused for patients that are in volume control ventilation. Because patients that are in volume control ventilation, their target variable is flow, which means throughout inspiration for those patients, the flow will be constant. So don't misinterpret the flow volume loop. Put things into context and understand what you're looking at and apply it individually to each patient. And this is a fixed obstruction where you can see the inspiratory and expiratory limbs affected. Now let's just go over the volume pressure loop. My first question to you is what is the target variable? The target variable cannot be pressure because pressure is not constant throughout inspiration. So as a result, the target variable is flow, which makes this mode of ventilation volume control ventilation. So let's start at the inspiratory phase. Now remember, inspiration goes like this and expiration comes down like that. At the start of inspiration, what is this pressure? This is your PEEP. Now, as you increase the pressure slowly, the alveoli are slowly opening up. The idea is to open up alveoli to make sure, make sure that they all look like this. And you want to recruit the alveoli. You have a mixture of some deflated alveoli, maybe like that, and some completely collapsed alveoli. So as we are increasing our pressure, we are slowly recruiting more alveoli. Right here, I would say a lot of the deflated alveoli are now becoming recruited. So now, here's an interesting point. This is known as your critical opening pressure, also known as your lower inflection point. This is the point at which you can see there's a massive amount of recruitment. There's a little bit of pressure delivered, but a lot of volume that you get out of it. This is the area with the best compliance. So as we go up this line here, we reach this point here. So this pressure right here is your peak airway pressure. And the volume associated with that is the tidal volume that you've set. Now, let's start the exhalation process. Now, as we go down to exhalation, you see a second inflection point, also known as your upper inflection point. Now, this is the point where you start de-recruiting units. So now the alveoli go back down this way. And as a result, as you decrease the pressure, you lose more alveolar units. Sometimes you might see this towards the end of inspiration, also known as the penguin sign or bird's beak, in which you are applying a lot of pressure, but achieving very little volumes. Essentially, you are over distending, putting the patient at increased risk of barotrauma and even volutrauma. So if you see this on the volume pressure loop, you might want to decrease your tidal volume because there's very little utility in keeping the tidal volume so high if you're over distending the alveoli. Now again, you can't see over distension in pressure control ventilation because in those curves, the pressure is completely constant. 
Okay, that's it for loops. Join me in my next video where I talk about PRVC or pressure regulated volume control. Thanks.